so this is looking at some herbicides that at least have suppressive activity on Bermuda grass. Now, just because they're listed here doesn't mean you go out and spray these once and all your Bermuda grass or wire grass will die. And these are the rates for tall fescue. Uh, Acclaim, Ornamec, ProGrass, you can see all pretty high rates and a pretty big list of products that are available there in tall fescue to control Bermuda grass. When we move to Kentucky bluegrass, the rates uh, shown in red uh, have decreased for a couple of the products, and uh, Ornamec is no longer an option at this point. And if we are talking about creeping vent grass for our golf colleagues, the options are much more limited. The rates are severely limited, as well as most of the products have been removed. In fact, uh, there's a mistake here. This line through the 2% should move down to where the turquoise ester is. My apologies there. So 2% is still an option for Ben. It's one of the best options, but turquoise is not. That, that rate of turquoise would actually kill creeping bent grass fairways. All right, and here's a slide that I really like. It shows, kind of puts things in perspective. It shows us, all right, well, if these are options that I have for wiregrass control, how much can I use in a year? And you can see that there's the, the various uh, ranges for all of these products. And how much will a single application at a typical rate cost? And that's going to range anywhere from a low of about $32 to a high of $1,494, uh, depending on uh, the product. So this is just an image showing what a product like Tenacity or Pilex will do to Bermuda grass. And so uh, it's also a really good case for possibly using turpline ester to tone down the white discoloration, because depending on the population level, sometimes everything can turn white. Here's an example of a claim plus turpline. Uh, these are usually monthly programs that are you know, achieving the same end goal. This is in a ryegrass lawn, giving us pretty good uh, Bermuda grass control there. Pilex is a fairly recent addition to the market. And it has risen to the top as a premier product for selectively targeting Bermuda grass in cool season turf grass. Here's a Pilex program on the left and an Acclaim program on the right. And this hint of green that you're seeing in here is an indication that the Acclaim program, Acclaim plus turf on program, is not controlling the Bermuda grass as well as the Pilex program. Typically in the research, though, we see these two being statistically equivalent. If you're on a monthly Acclaim turf on program, compared to a every three-week Pilex turf lawn program, the two products are going to perform about the same. Pilex does offer superior Bermuda grass control. Here you see in a tall pesky lawn this type of selectivity that we get there. And we've done a lot of research at Virginia Tech. I'll try not to bore you with uh, data, but notice in a, a light infestation of Bermuda grass, this is a tall pesky lawn height or, or rough height turf, any of the programs that contain Pilex and turf lines, so the three colors that you're seeing right up here at the top giving us 100, a near 100% control, that's these products here. Pilex at a half, one, or 1.5 ounce when added with turf line at 32 ounces per acre. The green line here coming out at about 60% control toward uh, uh, the end of last season. And notice this last rating date is actually mid-May of the next year. No, no new applications have been applied. We're looking at a year after the trial's initiation date. So anyway, the acclaimed turpline program coming in at about 60% control. Um, and then we have some products by themselves, such as turpline alone or, or uh, acclaim uh, alone, uh, not performing uh, quite as well. Now, when we move to a site that was a much heavier infestation of Bermuda grass, we see a slightly different story where only the high rate of Pilex and the one ounce rate of Pilex are giving us acceptable control in the next year. And notice that the 1.5 ounce, three applications of that rate, gave us uh, excellent in-season control. At one ounce, it took us a while to get to that same level of control. Uh, so we did not see the evidence in the season when we were applying, but the following year, we had pretty good control at either one or 1.5 ounce. Lower rates of Pilex and all the programs with Pilex alone, for example, that did not have uh, turf on, not performing as well. Do you consider these seasonal programs? In other words, as good as a one and a half ounce is, most likely you're going to come back and continue to treat in the future, or you take some time yes. off? Yes, and I'm going to get into that here in, in just a second, just kind of looking at what is your next year expectation depending on the program you use and what can you expect long term. 
Uh, what's the deal with turf lawn? As I mentioned, here's Pilex alone. Here's Pilex with turf lawn. Almost looks like the weeds aren't being controlled, but in fact, you just get this kind of subtle melting out of the Bermuda grass. The data always shows, as I've just shown with the lime grass, control is actually better. Only the combinations with turf lawn were at the top of that grass giving us the best control. Pilex by itself cannot compete with Pilex plus turf lawn. And this is speaking to Dr. Goatley's question at, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, can we expect one season to give us effective control of Bermuda grass? No, pretty much never. We've had a few trials where a few plots were completely eradicated in one season, but it's very rare. And notice if we spray in summer when the Bermuda grass is very happy and when it has plenty of time for recovery following your three treatment program, uh, we are not performing as well. That's the green bars. More Bermuda grass will return next year. A big bar is a bad thing in this case. Whereas if we spray in the fall such that the last application ends right before frost, we get much better control. Even our Roundup renovation is uh, looking better. Pilex with turf lawn or claim with turf lawn, all giving us uh, around 5% recovery in the second season. And Tenacity plus turf lawn performing a little, uh, not quite as well. About half of our Bermuda will return in the next year. But think about this. If you have 5% cover of Bermuda grass, where normally you may have in a patch that was 90 plus percent, that's a great improvement. But that 5%, if left to its own devices, uh, will be 90%, possibly if it's a good season for Bermuda grass growth in one season. So just taking one season off can uh, replenish your population by season's end to where it was when you started, even if you made a gain as good as 95% control of the Bermuda grass. Moral of the story is, hit it again in the following year. Uh, technically, it should get easier and easier. You know, if you started with 90% in the first year and you're at 5% of that in the second year, it should be easier to spot treat that. So stay on it with extreme presence. All right, so here are the options. Bermuda grass control in, in say, a tall fescue, uh, lawn-type situation, rough-type situation. We have non-selective renovation. In this case, you know, the maximum application, broadcast application of glyphosate is going to be 5 pounds active ingredient per acre, which is 5 quarts of a standard isopropylamine salt product like Roundup Original, Roundup Pro, so it'd be five quarts of product per acre. Keep the site irrigated, and over a three to four week period, you're trying to encourage any wire grass that will to return or start to regrow so you can hit it again. You can do two of those applications per year, and then either uh, lay sod in the affected area or seed that affected area. And that's a pretty effective program if you can get both of those applications out in a timely fashion, but you're dealing with up to a month of dead turf. No one wants to hear that. For our selective programs, Pilex plus turf line is the best, mainly because it gives you the most wiregrass control for the least amount of money. And that's the bottom line. So uh, Pilex and turf line are considerably less expensive than a clean turf line, and that's why it would rank as, uh, as a more recommended option. We are limited in what we can do with Pilex. One, uh, four ounces total per year, and in tall fescue, I typically recommend to keep the rate at one ounce. So you can go up to four applications on that program, or you can do three applications. In all cases, I typically recommend to use turflon ester at 32 ounces per acre, unless you're dealing with fine fescue or Kentucky bluegrass, in which case you need to lower the turflon rate, or unless you need to seed, and we often do in Virginia. So if you're on a three application program and you're initiating that in the fall of the year, which I would recommend, well, we need to get that seed out before it gets extremely cold. And so, uh, Dr. Goatley, I mean, in our area, I would say uh, that seed needs to hit the ground before October, say, 1st. Yeah, uh, ideally, we'd October like to go 10, out. October maybe at the latest? Yeah, 1st of September would be ideal. Ideal, Once right. We, you can hit the November. I still tell people to do it, but boy, you're really pushing the envelope. Right, right. and so in Richmond, we would be looking at uh, you know, our seeding window is going to peak probably in mid-October. And so that last application usually is going to be pushed toward the latter end of our window for seeding. And one good strategy to do there is just discontinue the turf lawn on the last application. We know we'll be three weeks after the previous application, so on that day, the third application of Pilex only, you can throw your seed down the same day. So it's one site visit. So what do we do in the spring, though? The, the most cost-effective way to shut Bermuda grass growth down the following spring is to use Tenacity plus turf lawn. 
tenacity is only twenty to thirty dollars per acre in that treatment program and the turf line is going to add sixteen to thirty two depending on your rate. So it's a pretty cost effective way to show Bermuda grass is very sensitive when it's first greening up. So any applications you can apply during that time of year will definitely delay its ability to expand in that season. But we found for long term, we're talking next year, two years later type of population reduction, those spring programs don't work because they allow too much Bermuda grass recovery in the summer season. But boy, as a as a really um, a slam to Bermuda grass early season to prevent that expansion, it's a great uh, approach. We also have other options. I mentioned a claim and turf line were fairly expensive. Uh, depending on for small lawns, they pack a good punch. They're great products, a claim and ornamec. Uh, they typically are going to be applied on monthly application intervals, and these type products, if, if you're if you're not winning the battle, um, you can integrate a claim or ornamec into pr programs that already have a pilot or tenacity program to build up the ante. Important requirements, and I say requirements. I mean you can do what you want to do, but if you really want to be successful at controlling wire grass, I mean, it's hard even if you're doing everything correctly. Don't mow within three days of an application. So try to let some recovery occur before you spray, and then don't mow until at least three days after you spray. Don't mow the turf less than three inches tall, and the taller the better if you're trying to compete with Bermuda grass. Don't apply the products to stress turf or during periods of extreme disease potential. Uh, be aware of that disease potential, and I'll show you some images where we've seen uh, catastrophic uh, impact from disease while on these programs. Apply products in late summer through mid-fall for best population reduction, then choose a cheaper product for the early spring just at green up period for that Bermuda grass to prevent expansion of the, uh, of the grass in the season. Seed tall fescue to fill any voids left by the dying Bermuda grass and follow proper cultural practices for managing that turf. Here's some issues that we have seen with disease associated uh, tall fescue injury. So what happens in many of these cases is the disease triangle is ripe for disease. We have very stressful conditions for tall fescue. And what normally would have been a slight reduction in green color, a very slight stunting or injury caused by Pilex or, or a Pilex turf on program on tall fescue, turns into uh, tipping the scale, where disease normally would have been 20, 30 percent. You lose a little bit of cover to when you're applying these stressful herbicide programs, you lose 60 percent of the lawn. And we've seen that happen in a few instances in Virginia. Here's a couple more images where massive uh, rhizoctonia and pythium blight uh, taking out tall fescue, uh, primarily where Pilex or Tenacity-based programs have been applied to the lawn because of the potential for slight tall fescue. All right, so in Bermuda grass control for bent grass situations, that's a unique challenge. I'm going to try to very quickly go through uh, some information related to that for our golf colleagues. Here's some really old work that we did evaluating prograss or epithumosate. Uh, this is the initial shot where we had previously laid bent grass sod into a solid patch of Bermuda grass. And you can see the bent grass is waking up in June and everything is growing. Everything looks happy, and we initiated our herbicide programs just prior to this image. When we go all the way to September 19th, after having applied five applications of 2% at 24 pounds per acre, we can see a defined bent grass strip that still exists. Now, if this had been the non-treated check, the Bermuda grass swallowed that bent grass, so there just wasn't much left. So at least it held the Bermuda back enough that we can see the bent. If we compare that to the ProGrass program, which was five applications of ProGrass, we've killed the Bermuda grass and the bent grass has expanded considerably. So we killed the Bermuda without causing undue injury to the bent. Unfortunately, a gallon of the ProGrass EC five times, that's two gallons more than the maximum EPA allowed use limit per year. I think more research just needs to be done in this area so that we can evaluate how ProGrass might, for example, be integrated with some of the new Pilex programs that people are looking at. This is an image from Dean Gray, the Chevy Chase Club, where he implemented a ProGrass-based program to control Bermuda grass in his bent grass and rye grass fairway. So we've been evaluating how to use Pilex in bent grass for quite some time now. In fact, 
there's been a new addition of a quarter ounce per acre to the label, and a lot of that was largely due to Virginia Tech research. We've also discovered that if you get the right rate of turfline ester, all of this is treated with pilex. You can see these strips were treated with turfline or mixed, or made a tank mixture of turfline at very low rates. You can eliminate that white discoloration. We found that somewhere between 0.5 ounce to 1 ounce of turfline per acre is an excellent uh, rate to go with. Timing-wise, still got to be careful with that, though, correct or no, In term, with the bent grass injury potential? Um, you know, during summer stress is probably not the best time to go at it. Uh, spring and fall would be better. I'll speak to that in just a second. But uh, as far as, now this is a tank mixture, the Turfline and the, and the Pilex. And, uh, but yeah, um, we see bent grass injury like this, though, anytime the bent grass is actively growing. The, the, and what Turfline is doing is slowing down bent grass growth, and that's what's causing the reduction in whitening. But we don't want to slow it down so much that we're severely injuring. But there is a lot that you can do with Pilex in bent grass. This is a bent grass tea, completely infested with goose grass and some crab grass. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look good. Well, it looks good to a weed scientist that wants to kill weeds. But, but, but it is an effective program. There's a lot of ways we can get out and use Pilex. Now, here's real quick some data that just shows Spring versus summer versus fall applications, Dr. Gober, like you were saying. We got a quarter ounce to one ounce of Pilex along the bottom here. And uh, we're looking at the cover of Bermuda grass in green when it was initiated, so before any treatments. And then in this uh, lighter color is after we've applied three applications at one of these Pilex rates. No other additives, no turf line at any of that. And you can see spring programs gave us a great reduction in overall Bermuda grass cover once all three applications were applied. Summer applications failed miserably. We really did not reduce the cover substantially. Again, I think because of the stronger Bermuda grass growth during, during that time. And then fall applications were not showing as strong a, a, an effect as the spring. But what's really important about fall applications, whether you're talking about bent grass, whether you're talking about tall fescue, is we want the winter to kill that Bermuda grass. So what we're doing with fall applications is we are harming the Bermuda grass. We are reducing the cover. But cold stress is going to seal the deal and give us the best population reduction. So fall applications give us population reduction. I'm going to back up. Spring applications just shut that Bermuda down. And it can last for you know one to two months where the Bermuda takes a long time to recover from those spring apps. So they both go hand in hand. So a grass recommendation, we really don't have uh, uh, a best recommendation at this point. I can tell you that ProGrass and Pilex are going to be the major players, and we are initiating new research this year to start looking at integrated approaches that use both of these herbicides on bent fairways to try to get a better idea. 2% is a great product for suppression because it does not discover the bent at all. We can use it on putting greens. There's a supplemental label that allows for applying it on the collar to prevent Bermuda grass encroachment. The problem is 2% rates, even as high as 44 pounds per acre, which is allowable on the label, number one, they're expensive. We're talking $1,500 per acre at that rate. And number two, they don't really control the Bermuda grass. They just keep it from encroaching. Hold it That's about it. So, yeah, supplementing that with edging or, or any type of hand removal, uh, it, you know, it can be an effective program, but it's costly and, and you don't really get killed. But it's very safe on the bench.